Um, I will do that. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah, Hi, Vinay Uncle. How are you? Hi. So good to see you. So lovely to see you. Hello. Hi. I, I do hope we'll have a group photo, right? Yes. Yeah, okay. We will. We can get it right away. <laughs> Hi. Hi, sir. How are you? You're also there. Hmm. Hi. How are you, sir? Unmuting. Now you can hear me, I think. Great. Yes. Can you hear me now? How are you? I'm fine. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Good, wonderful. Great. One. That's wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. Does Ashish know? Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay, great, great. Yeah. Hello, I'm free. How is everyone? I'm fine. And my, my, my daughter and grandchildren are, of course, in, in abroad. So they're yes. all. Everyone, yes. everyone is safe so far. Thank God. You know? Oh, Shona me. Shona is also coming. It's okay, now. I'm not saying it. I'm going to go home. Yeah, it's fine. I'm going to go home. Uncle, I hope the, uh, the cars get sorted out and the rain has been so disruptive. They clear sent such nice messages to them. They're very nice messages. Um, I think... Anitya. Hi, Anoop Ji. Hmm? Sometimes I use two devices. Hi, sir. Good afternoon. Maybe we can start. Can we all speak up yes. and say hi? Can you hi. all hear me? Very well, sir. Thank you. you. Thank you. I'll put it on the speaker. Um, so uh, maybe we can start. Sure. Um, so good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for joining us today. Uh -huh. uh, uh, so we are celebrating Dr. R.K. Pachauri's 80th birthday today by coming together and uh, launching a very uh, important and a very uh, dedicated work uh, that the entire team has put together all the data and uh, everything to convert it into a web page so that all the information related to his work, his life, and his mission is there at one platform, which we can now share with everybody easily. And so that it's out there for the global audience and our global family to have a look and get inspired. So to begin with, um, I would like to ask Dr. Ash Pachori to please welcome everybody, uh, all the, the entire family, the close ones, the friends and the colleagues who have joined us through the meeting and also to all those who are watching us live uh, through YouTube uh, from across the globe um, who have worked with Dr. Pachori and uh, I mean, who have been under him since for so many years, Dr. Ash. Thank you so much, uh, Drisha. I just want to convey a very warm welcome. Today is a, a day for us, uh, a very special day for us to come together and remember dad. Uh, and I think it's uh, particularly significant to launch uh, a website as tribute to him and his lifetime's work, his legacy, and his experiences professionally and otherwise. So uh, I'm really thrilled that we're able to be together here as we launch this. I should say that it's a uh, first generation of the website. Uh, it has a fair bit of information uh, and it's taken uh, uh, you know, a bit of time to put it together. And I want to thank everybody who's uh, who's contributed to 
to making it happen. But just like dad has uh, touched everybody's lives in very special ways, I want to say that his website uh, is something we envision as being everybody's, his whole family, his global families. And so um, it would be absolutely key and, and super um, important and special to us to be able to have everybody's contribution to that website. And really, I should say that the website, even it's in its first form and culmination today, is really a, an output of uh, many thoughts, um, you know, uh, pictures, videos, and content that people have very kindly and uh, shared with us. And I know with a lot of love and, and feeling, and I wanted to say that we will have a form which will go live uh, on the website shortly. I think in another few days, Komal, is, is that going to go live in another maybe two or three days or four days? So uh, it will be live on Monday. On Monday. Okay, yeah. so this form will be one where, um, which will be available on his website where we can, where we can all sort of log in, uh, you know, pick up that form and put, put in anecdotes, memories, accounts of his work, pictures, videos, and we welcome everybody to please share because we, we envision this website as, as one that will go on eternally as dad does in our hearts and something that will be a reflection of, of all of us, his global family, uh, as that always said, the universe is his family. And, and so his family's reflection uh, of, of him and everything he's meant to us and continues to. So um, we'll be sharing that website with you shortly, but um, on Monday that, that form will be available online and we welcome everybody's invaluable contribution uh, to it and and we hope to see the website develop as as you see it develop and and the way in which that has been and continues to be a part of our lives and will do forever and eternally so thank you all so much for being here this is truly special in so many ways and I know dad is as with us right now and uh, and is uh, is very proud I'm sure so thank you very much, family, for being here. And, and with that, um, I'll ask Dusha uh, to, to get us started, please. Um, we will have a few minutes to hear uh, some important and very, uh, very valuable thoughts, reflections, memories as we go today. So, and always, I hope. So thank you so much again, and a very warm welcome, and a happy birthday to dad always. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Rash. Um, yes, indeed, uh, we have a lot to share today. I think everybody wants to say something. And uh, uh, to, to begin with, um, I would first like to ask Mr. Vinay Segal. Uh, we have heard a lot of stories from him. I mean, luckily, uh, uh, about his and Dr. Pachori's. So maybe I think he's the best person to begin with. Uh, we'll have some good memories to listen to. Okay, can I be heard right now? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, all I can say on this day is that Pachi beat me even as far as the birthday was concerned. There are a couple of months. I was born a couple of months later. Yeah, so just a little louder, if you don't mind, please. I think the best thing is for me to put on my AirPods. Because there is the mic in this tends to be a little temperamental. Just keep me up. Okay. Okay. I think I'm. Um, yeah. The video is Hello. Gone off. Gone off. You can't see you, Mr. Segal. Yeah. yeah. Now yeah. you can see the video as well. Hi, Shona. Good to see you. Hello. Yes. Yeah. So as I was just saying that, Pachi beat me even as far as the birthday was concerned by a couple of months because I was born 
a couple of months after him but you know with him it was such a long association we met first in the month of february in 1959 and we were both firsties in jamalpur <laughs> and uh, for those of you who don't know much about jamalpur let me only tell you that a firstie in jamalpur represents the lowest form of human being yes. on the planet <laughs> so we were both uh, mercilessly ragged together but that was a time when we formed some of the strongest associations and friendships that have stayed with us throughout our lives we were a very small batch of eight people and there were three of us in particular we were called the three musketeers there was pachi myself and a dear departed owen kohli we did our training in jamalpur together we got posted to the same railway together the northern railway we did much of our probation period training also together so it was a very long association and there have been so many memories that one is flooded with all that i can say is that the the training period was one long association which i will always treasure and then fortuitously we were posted to banaras together and we served together in the diesel locomotive works so that further strengthened our association the fact that i got married to a doctor who was from lady harding as sarojus was uh, was another fortuitously similar circumstance and uh, saroj and my wife kusum they continue to be close friends to this day there are so many things that i can share about pachi but i think it's only fair that i give others a chance to speak but on this day i can only say that he is missed but he has left such large shoes to fill that i'm sure it's going to keep all of you busy for a long time to come thank you Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Segal. Um, yeah. Thank you so much for sharing the early days of his life uh, because we have seen him. I mean, at least I have seen him like recently, and we were always excited to know more about how he started and when he started and from where he started. So, thank you so much for sharing. sharing that story with us um can i ask uh, now mr prem shankar ji to please uh, share some memories with us uh thank you very much uh i've been looking forward to this opportunity to say something about patchy uh i wrote that that in the obituary in the wire when he died i was i was absolutely crushed uh because i just moved into golf links i'm literally 100 yards away from his house and i was really looking for spending much more time with him but let me tell you uh, uh, some things that my personal experience of patchy as, as a, both as a human being and as a as a dedicated uh, you know and totally a man of complete integrity who dedicated himself to the problem to the to the to the, to the crisis of climate climate change i first met Pachi, I think it was in 1983. Uh, the Tata Energy Research Institute, as it was called, then had just been formed quite a, just maybe a short while earlier, a year or two, two earlier. And it was one of the early conferences, and I had been writing on the possibility of using biomass gasification as a way of producing alternative fuels and and minimizing the impact of the oil oil price hike. Which, if you remember, was terrible at that time in the seventies upon upon the Indian economy. And Pachi had read some of that, and he invited me to a conference in in in, in Jaipur. It was at the Clark Shiraz, and that's where we met. And since then, we we stayed a little bit in touch, more or less. Um, 
mainly I think through my writing and through my, what I learned about him, you know, as he went from strength to strength. Uh, the next thing, sometime I suddenly got a call in 1987 from him. He was with the International, on the board of the International Association of Energy Economics, which is based in Washington. And he said to me, Prem, I've been seeing some of your writings in the Times of India on, on environmental issues. And why don't you send me three of your best articles? So I said, why? He said, we have an annual um, uh, sort of an energy journalist of the year award. And I think that you should try for it. Well, I sent you three articles and I was delighted when the jury actually awarded me that, 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 that prize, which I'd least expected. And um, I had to go to Luxembourg to, to, to get it and had the pleasure of seeing him there again. Um, then after that, we kind of lost touch because he was in orbit, you know, from the 90s onwards. And, um, but the good feeling remained. And uh, I do remember, uh, you know, coming to dinner at your place once you know, a couple of times and having the finest Rajas Rajasthani food I have ever eaten in my life in the jury. And I hope that one day you invite, invite me again, particularly since I'm so close to you. Um, but may I I'll just carry on a little bit more. Uh, Patch's work in the, in the IPCC was completely extraordinary. I, I don't think any people understand just how difficult it was. Because if you look at any country today, the, the, the vested interests who are behind fossil fuels are not just coal mining or oil mining companies or oil refineries and the great, uh, the, the great states who own those refiner, uh, refineries and so on. It's also the entire defense establishment of the West. Because if you suddenly don't have to deal to, to, to uh, rely upon, let's say, coal from uh, oil from the Middle East, then what are, what are your navies for? What are all your defense establishments for? Um, the, then the, next to that comes the, the whole of the arms industry. The entire structure of the world today is built around conflict, and the conflict is around non-renewable non energies sources, and particularly oil. Um, in the future, it could easily be lithium-ion if you go the wrong way. Uh, but the, at, at that point in time, therefore, it was very difficult to get oil exporters, oil importers, oil importers with, a, with, with, with global aspirations, oil importers who are tiny island states, all together, and to agree to the science of this. It's an incredible achievement that must have required the kind of diplomacy which I cannot even imagine. Patchy talked briefly about it to me once and took my breath away. But the results are there in the IPCC 4 and 5 assessment reports, which really have brought us to the brink of understanding the, 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 that, that we are facing the end of humanity. And had it not been for the ground prepared by those two reports, the IPCC special report of, of 1.5 degrees centigrade, which came out here before last, would not have made any impact. But as it is, the ground had been prepared. And once, uh, you know, IPCC, uh, uh, Patty told me how, for example, I think he was talking to someone in Saudi Arabia, main oil exporter, getting them around to accept um, the fi findings of the, of, of the IPCCs was uh, an incredible task. And one of the ways they did it was through building a structure which was so transparent in its selection and putting together of the information coming in from thousands of scientists, not all of whom, well, as often happens, is most of them very often don't agree with each other but finding a synthesis, then presenting it in a, in a language and with, with you know, margins around them of possible variations, uh, which would be acceptable and would bring in the vast majority of the, the, the professional work that had been done so that everyone felt included in this. That was an, a great task. And I think it was a task of superb diplomacy. It would be nothing like it. I mean, if anyone really deserved the, the Nobel Prize, 
and in the future, I think you will see that they will recognize this more and more. It was him. And I'm very glad that this IPCC, of course, everybody got it, but the coordination function was recognized. And I'm very glad that that, that was recognized and I shall always live with that. And I will remember that. But that's one last point I want to make. I think if you remember the terrific attack upon him immediately after the Copenhagen, Copenhagen Climate Summit, which had been carefully prepared and was in, de, designed to destroy the case for, climate, uh, for, for fighting climate change, the moment that the, 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 the summit failed, which everyone knew it was going to fail because we hadn't got over the question of the, 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 the Kyoto Protocol and the divide between the rich and the poor countries. And we didn't get over it in that conference either. But that, it, it, you, at that point in time, it, he became a focus of that attack. And all I want to remind all of you about is what Bashi did. And Ash, I don't have to tell you, this story I don't have to tell you, you know very well, but I will say it for the, for the benefit of all of you that what Bashi did was he got KPMG, probably the most, one of the most reputed uh, um, um, auditing companies in the world, to come and look at the, at the finances of Terry and his personal finances, and to give a report on their state. So that all these statements that, that, that are being made by strange people all over the place, saying that there was a cabal of scientists trying to push the world into giving subsidies which they could then their organizations could benefit from and put in their pockets and enrich themselves this whole idea had to be destroyed not only did it destroy it but George Monbiot who writes for the Guardian wrote a full article on Patchy and on his exoneration which I think the finest thing the finest tribute that anyone could pay to him I don't know where he is now I don't know whether he's on this on the screen I hope somebody will tell him that we remember what he did for Pashi. And we'll never forget. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Mr. Prem. Um, yes, not I doctor. mean, <laughs> so sorry. Um, I'm so sorry for God's sake. I wouldn't mind being a doctor, but I just don't happen to be one. Um, thank you for sharing that. Uh, how difficult it was at that time when he started his journey and how easy it for us today to stand there and build our own journey. So thank you so much for sharing that. I mean, it was so inspiring and uh, we can now even aim for high because uh, what he did was itself was something nobody can ever thought and nobody can ever achieve. But we will try to achieve at least 0.0.1 person as a young generation to follow his vision. Thank you so much. Um, can I now uh, request uh, Dr. Vibha Dhawan, uh, if she has joined us, I think she just, she just joined us. If she would like to say something, um, share some memories with us and the entire world. Thank you. Thanks so much for giving me this. Can you hear me? Yes. Very clearly. Oh, great. So thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. Of course, I have very, very long association with Dr. Pachauri and it's both, I should say, the difficult time as well as the time when he was on the peak. He was really, really a unique individual, a true leader, an inspiring person. And I don't understand or it's so difficult for any one of us even to think that kind of life he was leading. He'll come straight from the airport to the office Nothing will wait on his off, uh, uh, paper, will wait on his office even for a day. If he's overseas, you'll get the reply. You know it in the middle of the night, he'll respond back to you. And if it's something which requires a bit of concentration from his end or discussion, then he'll write back saying that, okay, when I'll return, then I'll discuss with you. So it was impossible to keep pace with him. And the other unique thing was that irrespective of, because I, am, I come from the field of biotechnology, 
but sometimes it was that he perhaps knew more biotechnology than me. So because he will be so well read what is happening and well traveled person and when he'll come back, he'll have 10 newspaper articles or magazines with him and this is what is happening overseas. What do you think can Terry be getting into this area of research? And someone who will listen to you because when I joined, I was pretty young coming straight from the university and the kind of faith he proposed in each one of us. So first time, like I wanted to buy a piece of equipment from Terry's fund. So I was very careful. I had drawn what we used to do in the university system that this is the lowest quote. Went to him, he just saw it, returned it back to me. You decide you have to use the equipment, not me, but don't come back to me saying it's not working. So that was the kind of trust he proposed in each one of us. I really, really feel very bad all the time. I keep on th thinking that someone who had given his entire life to humanity, he built this beautiful institute, Terry. But were we fear in returning even a part of our gratitude towards him? We have just uh, compiled a book uh, which was uh, the authors were all uh, Terry uh, Associ Alumni Association members. And when, when you read it, it is somewhere that we had a lot of respect for him, but somewhere we were hesitant in telling him the same. And I wish we were a little more bold in telling him our feelings, expressing our feelings to him. But yes, he's with us. He's amongst us. And he will keep on, like, when you're in a difficult situation, you just start thinking, what is it Dr. Pachori would have said in this situation? So let's move forward. So the kind of uh, uh, hard work which he had given to build this institute to save the human humanity, I suppose there, is, there will be no example in years to come as well. So thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Vibha. Um, Can I just come in for a moment? Yeah, Here. sure, sure, please. Uh, this is with reference to what Mr. Prem Shankar Jha related about the difficult times that uh, Pachi had to face. There was a time when Pachi uh, shared with me the problems that he was having and the fact that he was actually given death threats. At that time, I did a little bit of research and I told him that there were 2,700 full-time lobbyists working against him in the US of A alone. My God. And, you know, he just turned to me and he said, if you can't take the heat, you have no business being in the kitchen. That remark of his, I felt embodied the spirit of the man. And the fact that he fought against such tremendous odds and so valiantly will be a source of inspiration to all of us. Thank you. Would you send me what the work you did? I, I'd like to use it in, in, in some of my articles I write. I'd be very grateful. Huh? Uh, send it to Ash and Ash will take care of it. Thank you very much. Okay. okay. Thank you, Mr. Vinay. Um, and thank you for sharing the mantra of, uh, you know, keep working, the hard work, Thanks a lot. It's very important for us at this stage of our life to actually look up to the people who have worked with that dedication and hard work. Um, now may I request uh, Dr. Norma to please uh, share with us some memories from Latin America and uh, maybe pop. Dr. Norma? Yes, thank you. Good morning to uh, to everyone. Good afternoon. <laughs> For me, it's the morning. Well, what can I say about Pachi? For me, it was a great experience to know him. Of course, that I knew him about uh, all his work uh, from the IPCC before I met him in Mexico a few years ago. And uh, it was a big surprise to know him as a man, to know him as a human being. Uh, it was a wonderful person. I couldn't imagine before 
such a big person uh, around the world with academic uh, work and uh, scientific work uh, to have a so, such kind of uh, experience with him. Uh, I think that uh, different from you, that you had uh, so much time working with him directly in scientific uh, issues. Um, I had the opportunity to know him as a human being, as a man, as a simple person who was talking to us in a very short time, but a very hard time, night and day, taking care of everything. And I think that kind of uh, experience is really very important because you could see how he was, how he was thinking, how he was feeling, and um, that for me was a man, wonderful experience. Short time, very deep time, very special time that we shared together. And I had the opportunity also to share time with the, his family, Ash, uh, Shonali, Raji. And so, and uh, well, what can I tell you? I'm still like you thinking about him, um, feeling that he is always with us and uh, remembering all the time we shared together in India or in Mexico, uh, around Mexico. And well, for me, it's something that I will never forget, really, never, never. And uh, for me, um, the first time that he, he, he told me, I need to talk to you, uh, I said, okay, it was surprising in Mexico because such a big person, he invited me to take a breakfast and in the breakfast, he was talking to me about his, his problems, his life. And I thought, well, I am lucky to have this, this possibility to know the man. And uh, yeah, that was, we are starting to, to know each other, to know his family. And for me, it's something that I will never forget. I will never, um, I will say always thanks God to, to give me that opportunity. Then his work is something that is very good. It's something that is extraordinary. But the man, the human being is more, much more than that. Thank you so much. Thank you, Trisha. And thank you to all of you and all my love to the family. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Norma. Um, I don't have really to say anything right now because I just feel, um, as you said, great men are born to do great work. So thank you so much. Uh, may I now, uh, Mr. Nitin, decide to please share some memories with us. Uh, it, your your microphone is on on mute. Sorry. I'm going to switch on now. Thank you. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, let me just say that uh, I'm particularly happy to be here on the, the, the Patrick's 80th birthday. I got to know him about uh, nearly, I'd say, almost 50 years ago when he was still in the ASCII, uh, that's 45 years ago, and I was in the planning commission. But my association with him was more when I was in the UN and he came in as the uh, head of IPCC. The, and I would say that uh, that was really impressive with what he did in IPCC because he really succeeded in getting governments to focus on uh, uh, the making, addressing, uh, addressing climate change a central part of their uh, development policy. And the reason that was the case was first that in the, the reports that were produced under his uh, tutelage were very much more categorical about the human impact on climate. And second, he really devoted a great deal of effort to the outreach, to reaching out to policymakers so that they uh, could uh, grasp the severity of the problem, the dangers that lay ahead, uh, and the measures which they could take. And I thought that he really made a key difference to the impact of IPCC. 
you know, on the policy making in the uh, not just in the UN uh, negotiating process, but also at the national level. And I've seen a huge change uh, uh, since then in the extent to which climate change is now much more central in the thinking of uh, governments. And it's not just something which is relegated to environment policy. Not that governments are doing enough. Uh, the, I, I regret to say that that is something which needs to be done. And Trashy used to argue for that again and again and again. And uh, that was the second thing that I would really found very impressive about him was this way in which he built a network of support internationally. And that got reflected in the Delhi Summit on Sustainable Development and later the World Summit on Sustainable Development. And it's being continued by, in a different way by Ash in the program that he's running. So I would say that that is very important because in many ways, these issues of climate change and more several other environmental issues cannot be tackled without some measure of global cooperation. And this is something that he did. But I think his greatest achievement was Terry. He is the man who built Terry. And Terry is a unique institution. It's an institution which is not just an institution which produces nice studies. It's not just an institution which uh, makes noise when something happens as an advocacy. It's also an institution which is doing hard research and producing technologies for sustainable development. This type of integrated institution is something only a person like Patchy could have done because he had this capacity for responding positively to all new ideas. And uh, that is the reason why you're so many centers in Terry. And he was truly an enterprising person uh, when it came to developing Terry, uh, perhaps one of the, more, one of the most successful uh, leaders of an NGO that we have had in this country. So these are the things that I remember of him as a public person. As a private person, what I remember of, of him is uh, how relaxed he could be, how full of fun he was, how what a sense of humor he had. He was always ready with a joke. He was always ready to uh, pull a leg uh, here and there. And I also remember his uh, fondness for, how shall I say, uh, elegant dressing. And somebody like me, who's the exact opposite, uh, would look always a little uh, shoddy when he stood next to Patchy. So there are many things about Patchy that we miss. He was not a person whom one can easily forget. And uh, I look, and I'm very happy that uh, Saroj and Ash are here, that the other Pachoris are also joining us. And I joined them in, uh, sharing their sense of loss, but also join them in sharing a sense of celebration of a life which is very well lived and very successful in its own way. Thank you very much. Thank you, Natanji, for sharing that with us. Um, can I request now uh, Mr. Shailesh Nayak to share some memories with us? Thank you very much. Uh, of course, uh, my major association with him is about uh, climate change, but uh, the way Prem Shankar Jha has articulated his work, I can't uh, add anything, I can't dare uh, to put more things. And after that, I think he also made. But I was uh, very much impressed uh, about his another hobby, you know, mainly cricket. And uh, I also a little bit a fan of cricket and one incident which I remember, which is, uh, I just can't believe it. Uh, in either uh, 2012 or 13, I don't remember exactly, in, sometime in January, he said, uh, we will have uh, some cricket match, you can come and join. And then after that, we will have a lunch. He used to do it in Gulbahari. I think he has uh, some place there. And, uh, when I reached, he said uh, he has just come from some strips from outside. Straight he went, he changed his dress and played cricket for three, four hours. Then again went back, had a bath and came for lunch and he has invited some about 100, 150 people from all walks of life in Delhi. And this went on up to four o'clock or so. And then I said, what's next? 
said, no, I am living by eight o'clock flight back. I just came for this. Okay. That kind of uh, energy, I have not seen. It must be that time, 71, 72. And uh, even uh, the younger people, you know, they were all tired, but he was uh, fresh, absolutely. I don't know from where he got this energy and I really inspired uh, by him, uh, you know, to have this kind of energy, I think then only it is possible to handle such complex problems. There is this memory, uh, which uh, I'm still not able to understand how he was able to do this. So thank you very much. Thank you. I'm sorry, I'm on mute. Thank, thank you, Mr. Shailesh. Uh, thank you for uh, sharing this story with us. Um, we will also try to uh, do more and more activities other than work now. <laughs> and would like to be a multitasker as our mentor was, as our chief mentor was. Thank you so much. Um, can I now request uh, Mr. Surendra Pachauri, his brother, to please share some memories with us. Sir, sir can you hear us? You, uh, you need to unmute. Please. Yeah, I've done that. I've Thank unmuted. You. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yeah. Well, uh, Thank you so much for inviting me to this meet. Uh, Bhaiya's birthday is being celebrated in a very grand manner today. And uh, that's good because his memory and the work that he did must be uh, seen by the whole world. And the legacy that he has uh, left behind has to be perpetuated. And as far as I'm concerned, I mean, he was my elder brother. So almost like a father to me in that sense. He was about five years my senior. <clears throat> and uh, for me, he was a role model. All, all along, he was a role model, always helpful, always uh, giving advice, always there to uh, be there and stand by whenever there was a problem. So that was his uh, standing as far as I was concerned. And one always had that sense of security while he, while he was in Delhi. Well, one knew that he's always there and if there's any advice or any kind of uh, uh, help or any fa facilitation that's required, he's always there. So that was of course his uh, great uh, greatness. And towards the end, I think he had become, he had taken to a little bit of spiritualism also and uh, in my last year, last year on this very day, we always used to celebrate our birthdays together. He presented me a book by one of the great Swamiji's. And I thought that was a, a, a new dimension which I hadn't seen much before. But of course, he would always uh, be a very God-fearing person and always very uh, respectful to all our elders, respectful to everybody around and treated everybody very fairly. That was one outstanding quality. And uh, of course, we are going to miss him, but Terry's uh, contribution is uh, something very uh, notable and the world recognizes it. And he being the founder of Terry is uh, there forever to come. Thank you. Thank I was, you. Yeah. I was wondering if I could say a couple of words more you know, would you mind? But after others have spoken, there is time, all right? Please, sir. You, would you, you want me to say, it, say something? Please now? go ahead. Yes, sir. Yes, There's just one you. thought that I think most people miss this. So I, 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 do wish, to, I, wish, I wish to sort of this, bring it out properly. There's a quality that is very, very rare in human beings which is the capacity to see and recognize worth in some another human being in your own area without feeling in any way threatened. Hmm? 
to ask this question is generosity. It's the quality of generosity. We have that much of sensitivity. Ash, I'm, I'm sorry, there's, you know, we are, please continue and um, I, we'll talk later. But, um, you know, because there's some, uh, some I, maybe I've cut in on someone else speaking. I, I apologize. Please go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Prem. Um, um, maybe we can now uh, start uh, to um, reboot the website. Uh, Komal, I would like you to coordinate with the web team if the website is live. And uh, now I think uh, we can ask Dr. Saroj Pachauri to please share some memories with us. And uh, soon after that, we will uh, launch the website. Hey, thank you very much. Um, it's so wonderful to have so many friends and family together on this wonderful occasion, very special occasion, which we are celebrating. I say we'll celebrate it and not say we will look back in a different way, which I don't want to right now. I want to celebrate him and his life. And this website that, that is being prepared for him is also um, a step in the same direction. He's, um, I hadn't seen it until this morning, although I had been kind of part of developing it. And it's really, beautiful. It's a beautiful beginning. And I know it's the beginning and there's a long, long way ahead before we can get to where we want to go to. Because he, it's going to, they're going to try to archive all his work, his life's work. And that's a lot of work to archive. And at the moment it is, I understand, spread out in many different places. So we are going to need a lot of help and support from a lot of friends and colleagues who can assist us in putting this website together. But this, this idea of a website for him is very important for many reasons. One thing I think if he were here, he'd love it. He would really love it because this was, this was close to his heart. And also because I think his work is so important, which many of you have dwelt on. His work has been so important in so many different spheres and I won't go into the details of that that it's very, very important for us to be able to have a means to share it. And there are many people around the world who would be looking for it actually once they know that it exists because it can be a source of a major resource for, for research, for policy advocacy, and for a variety of other uh, you know, um, intellectual uh, accomplishments. I'd just quickly like to say that uh, uh, you know, some of you touched on his personal side of life, and um, so, and you said somebody said that you know he, 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 I think Nitin said that he had a great sense of humor. Well, I can tell you that one of the reasons I fell in love with him is because he made me laugh. He just made me laugh, and it was such a wonderful feeling. And and all his life he made me laugh. And, and you know, anytime one was down and out, he'd make you laugh. <laughs> so this was an exceptional quality and a very personal one. The other is that there was a level of jealousy between his first wife and his second wife. Uh, I was supposed to be his wife, but his true love was Terry. His true love was Terry and he was a workaholic. And as Viva and others have said, that he was there day and night. So he was never available to me. <laughs> so in the beginning, it was a little hard, but then I kind of got used to it. And I also became a workaholic. <laughs> so I'll, I'll just stop on my own on, uh, for a minute. And I'd like to read out to you a remembrance that Rashmi has sent this morning. Uh, you know, she is a poetess. And she wrote this in five minutes, she says. And I think it was lovely. So I'll just read it out because she sent it for this event. She calls it remembrance. That you are and that you will be for now and evermore. Various remembrances we'll celebrate and keep a score. Because that's how we keep you close 
and in our hearts and minds. We speak of you, we laugh and cry, and to all false are blind. We loved you from the moment when we set our eyes on you. We loved you through the thick and thin, through rosy tints and blue. You made us laugh, you made us cry, you brought the world to us. You taught us that that of important import and what was not to make a fuss. And all these, these have been made us what we are, part of us deep. You live in us every moment, awake or fast asleep. Your soul is on to greater tasks beyond this world, these worldly apps, but in us you will always be perhaps. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Saroj. Um, now I would like to uh, show you the website. I'll share my screen. And uh, after that, we'll have another round of memories shared by the friends, the, the colleagues, and the family. Uh, Philo has dropped the link to the website. So if you want, you can watch it from your computer as well. Uh, meanwhile, I'll share my screen. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you. I would like to thank especially Shelly and Komal and Vishnu sir, Dr. Ash, Dr. Shanali. They together have pulled out everything and have been guiding the other team members to put all the information together, all the information uh, to select the photographs out of the sea of or the oceans of photographs that we had, like thousands and uh, thousands of photographs and uh, all the information. So thank you so much, the entire team for pulling up all the data in just 
three to four months and it's just the start and we will keep adding more and more information as Dr. Ash mentioned in the beginning. We'll be developing a form so that anybody uh, who wants to share more information can share it with us. The form will be live on Monday and we will be circulating the link via our social media as well as uh, through our email list. Thank you so much. Uh, moving on further, uh, we still have a lot of people who wants to share uh, and we have a lot of time as well. So may, maybe we can now ask uh, Dr. Shanali to please share some memories with us. Thanks, Trisha. Um, I'm feeling a little overwhelmed at the moment. Um, yeah, what can I say? It's a beautiful website, really. You guys have done a terrific job. Uh, I, I, I think of my dad every day. I, I miss him so much. Uh, uh, but he's here with us. I know it. I, th I dream of him all the time. <laughs> I have problems and then I want to talk to him and then I think about it. And then he comes to me in my dream and he tells me, Are, why are you worrying? Aise karo na? <laughs> Which is so typical of my dad. <laughs> I mean, his, he, was, he was always sort of trying to uh, make life easier for me in the sense of always giving me good advice, uh, always telling me to follow my dreams, even, on, even at times when uh, this was contrary to what he wished for me. <laughs> he had a very clear vision of what he wanted me to do in my life, and that was to follow in his footsteps. Uh, and I think I have to a large extent, but I also wanted to, of course, carve my own uh, path. Uh, and so uh, at times we clashed on that, <laughs> but uh, despite, despite all that, he, I, I know he, he loved me dearly as I did him. And uh, he, uh, yeah, he, he's, He's left such a big legacy for all of us. Um, I mean, I, I always, you know, people always said, oh, you have, to, you have to exceed what he did. I think even an army of 50 of us can't exceed what he did in his lifetime. Uh, but I mean, I do know that of all the people he touched, he left such a large imprint. Uh, and he, he provided such an inspiration that we, yeah, we forever hold, hold a debt to him for that. Uh, and um, yeah, I, I'm at a loss, of, loss for words, to be honest. <laughs> at the moment, I, I just, I'm happy, so happy to be here with all of you, remembering him, thinking about him, sending him our love uh, and uh, having this opportunity to celebrate his life together with all of you. So um, yeah, I, I won't say any more for now, uh, but yeah, wish you all well. And so glad that we are together on this occasion. Thank you, Ms. Shanali. Um... All I can remember right now is the way you and Dr. Ash were for, for the last, in the last 15 days were doing to and fro from the hospital to home, then back to hospital, then home. Um, you, you just didn't want to leave him and wanted to give more and more power to him. So he's watching and he's with us and Thank you so much, Dr. Ash, for uh, uh, associated with the pop so that we are now associated with this beautiful family. Thank you so much. Uh, now, may I ask Ms. Mandakini if she would like to say something?
can you hear us? Mini, uh, we can't hear you. Or see you. Or see you. I, I think uh, she has connectivity issues because her camera is also not visible. Uh, can I ask now uh, Miss Madhurita to please share some memories? Good evening, yeah. okay. Um, can you hear me now? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yes, we I'm, can see you though. I don't have my camera on. Sorry, I'm I'm not uh, in a place where I can put the camera on. Is it okay if I speak without yes, the camera? Yes, yeah, please. Yeah, yeah, please. I I remember Doctor R K Pachauri, of course, as my dear Raju Chacha, and um, <clears throat> I haven't really ever spoken about him in this way, and so I'm a little emotional today. Um, the thing that I remember about him, and um, I, I'm sure many people will certify to it, is that he managed to be available for everybody. I don't know how he did it. He had um, he had some this ability to make everybody in who he cared for feel very special, and he did this by really being there for them. Um, you, everybody knows his travel schedule was always full. Um, and as Saro Chachi said, he was always at Terry. Um, but I don't know how he found always a time to check in on me. And not in a superficial way, but in a very deep way. He wanted to know exactly what was going on in my life. He knew, wanted to know how I was feeling, um, what I had done recently, what I wanted to accomplish, and greatly, greatly encouraged me. He was the only person in my life who the madder the dream, the happier he was. So the higher the goal, the bigger the vision, the more he supported it. I never ever heard him say this can't be done or don't do it or um, don't be crazy. He always sort of said, had the next step. So if I said to him, I'm planning to do this. Yes, but then you should do it like that, which means he took it three notches above. And that was him, you know, he did it for himself. He did it for the people around him. And it's the mark of a truly great person who can carry everybody with him, um, who does not only think of himself, but the people around him and carries them forward. And I'm extremely grateful to him for that. And his, his love and his care has transferred onto the family. And I find that um, as cousins, as, uh, you know, even with my uncle, Dr. S.K. Pachori, or, or, you know, Guru Chacha, or, or Saro Chachi, or Swara Chachi, or, you know, any of us, we have very genuine, deep connection. And the tone was set by him. Um, missing him a lot, a lot today. And I suppose we'll be doing that for a very long time to come. Thank you for allowing me the opportunity to say this, say these things about him. Thank, thank you, Ms. Madhurita. Uh, can I ask Ms. Mandakni now? I think she has got the connection. If you can hear us. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm so very happy to celebrate Raju Chacha today with the entire family and with, your, with his other family, with all the people who shared his passion for the environment and uh, I agree completely you know I myself have the same love for um, the earth for environment um, let's say I got to know Raju Chacha as an uncle and one of the most beautiful things about him was that he kept my father alive for me my father died when I was 11 and uh, Madhurita was even younger but he did so much for his memory. And uh, despite all he did for the world, he also did things for us. And um, perhaps as a child, when you're 10, 11, or maybe seven, you don't understand the significance of that. But once you're older, 
we realize what that means. Um, not only to love someone like he did, like he loved my father, but he also created um, a kind of a, a culture, a practice that allowed my father to live on, not only for us, but again, um, in other people. He set up prizes and he set up memorial events. He even took uh, Madhurita, my sister and my uncle, uh, Dr. Surendra Pachauri and a very dear friend of my father's to a trip and to the place where he built a, where they built a memorial for my father. So I feel uh, Raju Chacha had a large heart, but as Madhurita, my sister said, he also had the ability to um, perceive people in a fine way and their needs and their desires. Um, I got to know him a couple of times very happily as an older person because I live in Vienna in Austria uh, to, to, to the, through the fact that Shonali, my cousin has moved here and I got to meet him several times. And once again, he was multitasking and um, I'm a great multitasker myself. So I guess that's in the family. I think all of us multitask. Uh, but even in those times, what always struck me was his simplicity. I know uh, one of you com commented on his style, but what I always noticed was that he was someone who was happy to be simple. He didn't um, invest too much in, in appearance. He uh, didn't have expensive tastes, you know? So um, people who give a lot to other people sometimes have to nourish themselves and they nourish themselves with luxury or with uh, you know, expensive things. But I found, and as some of you have remarked, he had a kind of self-sustaining energy. And um, I also want to thank Saroj Anti because as a woman, I know that behind every great man, there's probably a greater woman. And I'm sure that it was her nourishing presence, someone who was at home and someone who kept, and she was not just at home. She did a lot of great things and she's still doing great things now. So. Uh, someone who nourished his base, so to say, that he had a place to come back to and to fly out of and to achieve all the things he did. Um, I'm very proud of all my cousins, all three of them, uh, Rashmi, Shanali, and Ash, and of course, Nantara too, uh, daughter from uh, Dr. Surendra Pachauri. Um, each of them has manifested um, some part of Raju Jacha. And this is what makes me especially proud. There's something beautiful about a man who can grow like a tree, like a banyan tree, I would say, and has, uh, uh, you know, set up offshoots everywhere. Uh, one of the conversations I had with him when he was in Vienna was about Gandhi, um, Mahatma Gandhi, and he was writing a small uh, book about that. And I got interviewed about Gandhi a little later. Um, and I, you know, referred, I spoke to him and he happily sent me some of his uh, pages. Um, and at that time, I remember this was in Shonali's flat. He was again there for just like three or four hours buzzing off somewhere else again. And he said, uh, let me express it as specifically as I can. Um, and he said, uh, we were discussing the state of the world and the environment today. And I want to say this to all of you, especially all the young people. He said, there is almost nobody with a sense of vision today. And that really struck me. You know, someone who's like lived so much for this, right? He said that he didn't see anybody right now who had that vision to set the world straight. And I, who is not really from this field, I said, well, what about people like Greta Thunberg? He said, yeah, but they're just creating movements. They don't have a vision. Mm -hmm. And he was absolutely right. So I said, then who would you say would have the vision and who has the power? And he said, it's the young people. So all of you who are working on the website, and he said, you know, he told me about the POP initiative. And he said, these are the people who will bring the vision that is required for all these other initiatives. So 
Similarly, as he in my family was the tree, the banyan tree, and he kept my father alive in me and um, in other children, perhaps, who were you know, funded through him, who got scholarships, etc. cetera. Um, I want you to grow further like that banyan tree and uh, you know, keep his, grow the vision. Um, that would make me very happy and I know it would make Raj Chacha very happy. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, Ms. Mandakini. Thank you so much. Thank you for giving us the fuel to move on for next uh, 40, 50, 60, 70 yes. years. Thank you so much. Yes. We'll be watching you and we'll be, you know, applauding you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, can I now request Ms. Nantara to please say something? Yeah, hello. Hi, we well, can hear you. Uh, Thank you. Okay. So, um, of course, today is a very, very special day. I remember last year on his birthday, I sent him a message and I said, happy birthday, legend. So, which he truly was. And uh, uh, a father figure for me. And I used to call him daddy. And uh, uh, one of my first... Um, uh, you know, uh, the kind of work that he's done for the environment and for the world. And my first expression I ever heard from him regarding all this was solar energy. I think that was the first time I ever heard it from his, uh, uh, from him. And it was always at the back of my mind. Probably we were just kids, never knew much about it. But uh, slowly, slowly, as we grew older, I realized what he was all about. And his image in my mind was always greater than anything else put together because I knew he was always doing very great work. But my relationship with, with him was uh, you know, very personal because he was more like a father figure for me. And uh, <clears throat> in fact, when I got married, he did my milni with my husband's grandfather. So that was the highest authority in any family. And um, he was, he always made everybody feel very special. And I remember when he got the Nobel Peace Prize and we were so happy. And I just said, Daddy, you know, you've got this, you must evoke God's blessings, please do a heaven. And he said, sure, I'm going to do it. And the next week it was done. I mean, that's the kind of importance he gave to my suggestion, which I will never forget, you know. And always, even whatever occasion I called him for, even if he came for five minutes, he would always come. I don't think there's a time I ever remember not, him not coming for anything that I had invited him for, whether it was 10 minutes or five minutes, he always came. And he would always get sweet gifts for me and he, he knew I loved tea so much. And I think he had gone to China and got this miniature tea set, which I've kept with me. And all I can say is that I know Ash and Shones and Didi and Everybody is doing a lot in this field that he had started. And I hope it continues the way it should be. And he's shining on us and we will love him and will always love him eternally, eternally. And love you all so much. Thank, thank you, Ms. Nantara. Thank you. thank you so much. Uh, can I now ask uh, Mr. Ashish Dixit if if he's still there, yeah. Can, would you like to say something? Hi, good evening, everyone. Good evening, sir. You know, my association with Dr. Pachauri started very late and I consider myself uh, somewhat unlucky that I came very late in his life and because the time which I spent with him and during his company, I have learned so much from him, though I am not from the scientific community or a scientist, but whatever, you know, his personality was such that he had so much to share, so much to make other people look forward to. and. Uh, even without, like, he was such a legendary person that even without 
others other people knowing he'll make them understand so many things by his words which are full of wisdom and uh, yes i had occasion of traveling with him i think three to four times to different places and it was a phenomenal experience and i think he left us pretty soon because uh, i always used to tell him so that uh, you are an inspiration not only in terms of whatever you have achieved in your career but also your fitness i used to compare him to my uh, former boss mr jaitlani that sir you and uh, mr jaitmi are al- almost alike you both are so fit and the amount of work you do for your fitness like sir used to play uh, badminton and mr pachauri used to play cricket so all these things uh, you know made me look up to him i was so inspired with him and uh, i'm like uh, it's a uh, still we don't believe like i speak to ash more than often and it's like uh, it's very difficult to believe that someone you know the, the void which he has left i think it cannot be filled but yes we have to move ahead and do what he inspired us to do that uh, we all should succeed in whatever we do we should all be successful and take care of our society and environment because environment i think was closest to his heart and uh, uh, we all miss him thank you very much thank you very much so um now can i request uh, dr ash to kindly read the note sent by dr mathur thank you drisha i'm very happy to share a message um that dr ajay mathur director general uh, terry uh, the energy and resources institute has shared um and on his behalf i share with you mrs pachori ash and friends i am sorry that i am not with you at the launch of this wonderful initiative to create a website that captures the life and experiences of dr pachori as we speak i am participating in a webinar looking at the future of carbon free steel making in india it is a recognition of dr pachori's vision and stature that this option of using hydrogen to make steel from iron ore instead of Rash, can you hear us? Uh, I think there is some connection problem. Yeah, because I think the audio is breaking up in between. Yeah. Yeah. Can you try once more? We lost you like after twenty to thirty seconds. Okay. Is it any better? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, so from the steel uh, meeting from the steel yeah. meeting, perhaps. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So uh, just let me know if you can't hear any point, uh, please. So uh, the the note reads: Dr. Pachori's vision and stature that uh, uh, that we we again lost you. Like the signal was breaking. Maybe we can all turn our videos off. that will perhaps no no maybe maybe what i'll do is uh, give me give me a, a second and it's clear I'll... now <laughs> i don't know <laughs> okay i'll read it really fast i hope it, i hope i can make it through uh, it says um uh, it is uh, and of using hydrogen to make steel from iron ore instead of coke is on the national agenda and we have the secretary steel and the steel makers is it not working 
works and then it doesn't work in between okay. as soon as you come to uh, you know sharing the detail of the project it disappears it's okay. like start breaking <laughs> all right i i am going to try and sign in from my phone so that i can share this message and then uh and then i go back to the computer just give okay. me one second please and uh it's not a very long note but it's a, it's an important message and i'm very happy to share it how about you just post the text in the chat then at least we can read it while you're you know reading and breaking up okay can you hear me now yeah, yeah. okay perfect so i'm sending it on my phone um I'm going, to read, I'm going to read this out. So it says, um, Dr. Pachori's vision and stature is that which created the option of using hydrogen to make steel from iron ore uh, instead of coke on the and put it on the national agenda. And we have the Secretary of Steel and the steel makers of India participating in this webinar, along with steel makers from Sweden who are piloting this technology. At Terry, we have fond memories of Dr. Pachori. Indeed, he lives with us every day in everything that we do. It was with great pride that the Terry Alumni Association launched a book in his re remembrance this morning, bringing together the memories of many colleagues. The website that you are launching today would be an excellent way to remember Dr. Pachori in perpetuity. We at Terry will help and support the creation of this website and will provide all the information that we can from our archives to populate the website. I think it is a measure of Dr. Pachori's accomplishments and of our respect for him that through a book launch earlier today and through this website, be, being together launched now, we continue to mark the special places that he has in our life. Thank you. And I'll post the text to the, to the chat here as well. Thank you very much. And thank you, Dr. Mathur, for, for the great honor and for your invaluable support uh, without which we wouldn't be able to, to develop this website and be able to do all that I think we collectively be able to do all that I think we collectively uh, to all of us and, and to the world to honor dad and his legacy. And uh, I, I'm sure the website will be a great tribute. I know it's going to take time and uh, we'll do this and we'll do it together. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Ash, and thank you, Dr. Mathur, for such a lovely note. Um, can I now request Mr. Fernandez to please share some memories with us? Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Huh? Uh, good evening, everybody. I am privileged to get this opportunity to, to speak on the occasion of the 80th birth anniversary of a dear revered Dr. R.K. Pachori. Dr. Pachori was a different personality for different individuals. I was one of those individuals who had the privilege of interactions full of warmth and understanding. I was appointed in Terry as an executive assistant to Dr. Pachori in April 2006, and until the day before his surgery on the 31st of January, I had the privilege of having continuous interactions with him, which was a valuable learning experience. He gave me a free hand to the discharge by my, uh, my responsibilities in whatever way I liked. This gave me enormous confidence and helped me to develop my personality. Dr. Pachori was in a sense a superman. Dr. Pachori's office was open for all employees and they could walk in any time for his advice. A meeting of 10 minutes with Dr. Pachori could keep us busy for a number of days. Apart from his interactions with the employees of Terry, 
Dr. Pachuri had a number of meetings with others from different walks of life. There was no end to the scores of things he could handle in one day. And after all this, he also found time to play cricket, about which he was so passionate. Despite being so busy with daily affairs, Dr. Pachuri kept himself equipped with global affairs, including politics, environment, and state-of-the-art technologies. Dr. Pachuri's thoughts would go much beyond what anybody could think of. Unfortunately, he departed from this world before we could take advantage of his entire knowledge and wisdom. As the Hollywood character Hulk, one of the members of the Avengers, required more and more space as he changed his appearance from Banner to Hulk. I hope Dr. Pachori's family members will have to provide more and more space for his website that is being launched today. As and when more and more people will come forward to share their experiences with Dr. Pachori. He had acquaintances all over the world and made it a point to keep in touch with each one of them from time to time. My last meeting with Dr. Pachori was in the forenoon of the 29th of January, 2020, with my colleague Anoop, because thereafter he left for the hospital. When we left that day, he hugged both of us together, a moment we'll cherish forever. The world will always miss this distinguished personality. However, I'm sure his spirit is still guarding all of us from up above. May his soul rest in peace. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fernandez. Thank you for sharing that. Um, and I was just looking at your face, the way you were smiling when you were sharing all that. So I can feel and the way when I think about him, I have the same smile on my face. So thank you. Uh, can I now ask Miss Shelley to please say a few words? Thank you so much, Trisha, and thank you so much uh, to, uh, to all of Dr. Pachori's family who is present here and his friends and well-wishers. Um, so yeah, I'd just like to share my screen and uh, just maybe just like visually like, you know, present uh, some, some impressions I have of him because of course there is, is not enough uh, time for uh, uh, you know for, for us to share everything um, so just let me know if you are able to uh, see the screen yeah yeah we can see okay so you know my interaction with Dr. Pachori dates back you know it, it must be early 2008 and this was uh, New York, and this was, of course, a very fleeting interaction and impression of Dr. Pachori. And uh, because I was working with one of uh, his colleagues in New York at a research center on climate change, and uh, my then mentor and then boss was also a lead coordinating author of the IPCC. And so like literally like, you know, the first impression that I got from his colleagues, you know, at the IPCC there in New York was that, oh, he is a Dumbledore of climate, of the climate movement. And, and I mean, I was really new to the field. I had just made a switch over from being a financial analyst and I just wanted to do something on my own, which was different than my training. And this was like, you know, uh, a really like, you know, and my first uh, event on, on uh, which I attended on the topic of climate change was where Dr. Pachori spoke. So it really had a very lasting impression on me. And I did like, you know, uh, get a lot of inspiration from that. And I continued to work towards this cause, of course, you know, completely deviating from what I was trained to do. So that was my first impression. And of course, like, uh, you know, just, you know, I do feel still that Dr. Pachori, uh, you know, continues to watch on us and smiles, keeps on like, you know, giving us advice. Uh, I'd like to just think that, you know, he still lives and, you know, the cause lives and his legacy will live, continue to live. And uh, thank you so much, you know, for launching, taking this initiative and, initiative and launching this website. 
and i do really hope to like dig into dr pachauri's archive one of these days you know being a being a archival you know researcher myself this will be really something i will look forward to even as a researcher and just you know uh, you know borrowing from one of the quotes which you know my colleague rumbi you know who was also there with us and dr pachauri and his family was you know through thick and thin she like always said that you know dr pachauri reminded him of one quote of lord alfred tennyson which was it's better to have loved and lost than never to have loved at all and i think dr pachauri would have said it's better to have lived loved and created something that can never be lost and that's his legacy and that's the cause he stood and and it's the cause that he stood for certainly dr pachauri said rolling a movement on climate change and this cause will live and dr pachauri too is watching and smiling and we all have the solemn responsibility to take this cause further and since it's dr pachauri's birthday today you know this was a theme of you know dr pachauri's constant birthday cards you know he actually like being an institution builder uh, created a team in at terry on uh, green growth and at the very first orientation meeting of this team he said oh you know what you guys have to generate so much of surplus that we should be able to buy a helicopter and with that we should be able to travel very often you know from terry in new delhi to mukteshwar to one of terry's establishment in mukteshwar and you know so since then uh, at least you know from our team whenever we whenever his birthday came and whenever we gifted him something it was always on the theme of helicopter i remember like you know the first uh, first set of gift was like literally a tie with hand painted helicopters and <laughs> then the second one was a helicopter with collage but the third one by then surely enough our team had made enough revenues and enough surplus and so then you know uh, based on dr pachauri's own choice we presented him three options of three different you know types of helicopters and brands of helicopters saying like look you know the line is where our surpluses stand and we can actually buy you know three of these any three of these helicopters of course his first choice was sikoreski and of course uh, the sikoreski brand that you see here was really like you know the most uh, uh, it it was a it was a very small four seater capacity he wanted like a big sikoreski helicopter which would have cost much which would have cost like at least 10 million but anyway uh, i do i do uh, if i remember you know correctly he did made a visit Uh, he did go to sikoreski factory you know which was towards the end of like you know his extensive uh, traveling so you know with this you know i do uh, you know that's all i would like to share you know on his birthday uh, and this was yes the birthday card which we gave him on in in the year 2014 yeah thank you thank you so much thank you shelly <laughs> um Can I now ask Vanessa from our team to say something? Vanessa? Yes. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> thank you so much, Trisha, and thank you everybody for me. It's an honor to be here with all of you and to celebrate this 8th birthday of Dr. Pachauri. Um, I'm now based in Mexico. I didn't have the opportunity to live all the great experiences that all of you are um, sharing. And I only had the opportunity to meet him online. And, um, but like the short time that I worked with him, he showed me like the great person and the great human being that he was. He always was giving me the, his unconditional support since the first time that I started on pop movement, he was always motivating me. He always was making feel so special and so fortunate to be with him. And um, something like that made me think like that is that I remember even when he was in the hospital, he was always supporting me. He, I had like a, a great experience and a great, um, and a great memory. That it was when I, I was trying to apply to a to a prize. Even if he was in the hospital, he was like signing me the letter to me to participate on. He was I was like no no please. He was like yes please. And he he was he was in the hospital that 
it's like something really, really special for me because I have lived uh, um, that situation in with my family. I know what it is to be in a hospital. I know what it is, this situation. So that it's like um, something that makes me feel like so special and that shows the great human being that he was because he was always trying to support. He was always trying to, to be there and to make you the better person and to be the better professional. So I really, really feel very, very um, special and very, I, I know that it's opportunity to me to be here with all of you, with Dr. Ash, that he always has been with me and has been like motivating me to be part of the pop movement. And um, I think that um, all the, the, the teachings that he gave me, even it was online, it was like something like really big and really great. And I feel like a, a really, really special person um, here in the world because I had the opportunity to meet him and I had the opportunity to work hand by hand with him. It's something like um, not unforgettable because it was like how a young person, how like a uh, young person of 23 years it's working with he, like with him. So it was like really, really uh, a great experience. And, and I really feel really grateful with all Pachauri's family. Thank you, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity, for giving me this inspiration to, to work to, to protect our planet. And um, Pop for me, it's now my, my life. <laughs> I have been like um, since here, since two years ago with Dr. Ash and with Dr. R.K. Pachari. And I can say that Pop has given me everything in my professional life, has given every, all the, uh, the teachings that I have right now. It's because of Pop and because of Dr. R.K. Pachari and Dr. Ash Pachari. Um, I feel really, really, really um, grateful for that. Thank you so much, Trisha, and thank you. Thank you for giving me the honor to be here with all of you and to be here in this really special session. Thank you, Vanessa. Um, can I now ask Komal to please say a few words because you have done some kind of a mini research already on Dr. Pachori because you pull up all the data you have been working from last week, uh, like day and night to launch this website uh, with Harun and Shanji, our web team. So Kumal, over to you. Thank you, Trisha. Uh, I would like to read something. So yeah, dear mentor, we will always try to do what you did. Seek to follow what you saw with heart and mind. Continue this journey with pain, determination and joy, navigating the difficult path to truth and freedom that lies in your vision. Dear mentor, thank you for sitting down with us. Thank you for giving us the courage and pride to do things we have never done before. Thank you for loving us and pushing forward our talents and skills with the greatest belief. Thank you for showing us right against strong, building a journey we were bound to take. With highest privilege and pleasure, dear mentor, we will try to do what you did and follow your vision, all the while cherishing your presence in everything we do. Thank you so much. And thank you, Dr. Raj, to keep me associated with the POP and the family. Thank you so much. It's a great privilege to be with all the Pachauri family and all the entire POP family. Thank you so much. And we'll always miss Dr. Pachauri. Thank you, Komal. Uh, we have just two members left now, I think. Philo, now it's your turn. You can't say no. <laughs> Hi. Hi, everybody. I think I've probably known Dr. Pachauri for the shortest time for about a year. And though we were in correspondence via email, I've met him. I've, ha I've had few precious memories of him, of close interactions. And one thing that I like to think about was when he was learning how to tweet. And I think there were a couple of us who were coming and giving him, uh, telling him how to tweet. So I think that was like the first time I've had this, saw him how his mind works, like how he thought. So when the, the tweet that he tweeted when I was next to him was something you could write a research paper about. It had such a huge, uh, a very nuanced idea that he wrote in a huge paragraph and then had to, in a word limit, shrink it down. And then you saw the 
the way how his mind works, the entire process of shrinking it. And it was done in such a smooth and, you know, and it was just a tweet for him probably, but for me, it kind of represented, you know, the entire, the work, the, the work he must have done. I think that's among many other memories stays with me to this day and him and Dr. Rash and the reason I am with the pop movement is because of both of them and I'm really grateful for that. Thank you. Thank you, Philo. Uh, now, just now that you just mentioned, uh, I realized that yes, even I felt that that even just for a tweet, he was so particular and passionate that it should be correct, the right information should be there, and uh, thank you so much for sharing that. Uh, so I guess it's me only who is left, and uh, what I want to say is, uh, first of all, like. I am very, very privileged because in the last few years, uh, I worked very closely with him and uh, be it how to do, how to take out data for the research, like the very, very difficult data, which none of us have even thought about, pulling it together, how to work on it. He taught me a lot of things. He taught me how to manage work and life. Uh, because I remember once uh, I was very, I was afraid to even go to uh, meet him during a meeting because I was supposed to submit a task given to me and uh, I was very afraid to enter inside the room. Uh, but he said, uh, come sit Drisha and I sat there and then he played music and uh, I was in my head, I was thinking that uh, is he going to scold me or is, is he going to ask me for, for the paper after this? But then he said, why are you so tense? You should enjoy your life. And I realized maybe he has read my face that I'm like under pressure right now. So he just totally flipped and changed the entire uh, moment for me. And uh, that motivated me even more. Uh, there's one more thing that I want to mention is um, I was very young when I lost my father. Uh, like I was just 16 at that time and my father was also a scientist so uh, he was from IIT so he was into chemistry and he used to love uh, plants so when I, was, uh, I never played video games my father used to tell me that you know you should go to the garden and you know you should do some gardening and should make them your friends and uh, when uh, uh, ma'am mentioned about you know he gave me my father so when I lost my father I used to just look at those plants and uh, used to feel happy that uh, he's around me he is with me uh, when I met Dr. Pachori and uh, I saw that same passion in his eyes uh, because I am basically from Kanpur so uh, it was a different world for me when I came to Delhi uh, when I met him, the first moment I met him, uh, I could see my father figure uh, with same values, with same passion. And uh, since then, I never missed my dad. And uh, so when he left, I, I now have like two guiding forces uh, somewhere around me who are going to help me. And I'm sure I'll do something great in my life thanks to their blessings. And I'm so privileged. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Rash, for uh, bringing me to this family. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. And I, I remember dad used to uh, always say that somehow uh, Trisha is related to us because she's a Pachori. Mm. <laughs> so he used, to, he used to always say that, you know, Bring uh, bring the family over, and he wanted to he wanted to find out what the connection is. So you know, Dusha is a Pachori, so he used to he used to make sure that she she would uh, do a whole lot more because she couldn't get away with anything. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you so much for sharing that, and and I was wondering uh, just as we close, um, if we could uh, play his favorite song, which I know you have uh, on your computer somewhere, please. But while you pull it up, I wanted to ask if Vishnu, um, we've got Purnima, Nitya, if anybody wanted to say something while we, we pull up this song, please. And I wanted to thank everybody. And also just to remind you that 
next week monday we'll have the uh, the form on online and we will eagerly wait to to have uh, you know your stories and pictures videos memories uh, posted to the site and we really look forward to hearing from you so thank you so much and uh, i wanted to ask if anybody else wish to say anything please I, I think there has been a lot of talk about the work that he had done, but I just wanted to share with you some of the lighter moments that we, we had together. Yes. He had a tremendously impish side to him and he was a great mimic. He spared nobody. And uh, his mimicry used to have us in splits at times. One of the things that he did was he taught my young son who was just about four years old at that time to call him away Pachi Saleh. And he also told him that, you know, this is a term of endearment. So he started addressing other very senior people as like Abhi Channi Saleh. <laughs> and it was very difficult to get him out of this habit. So that is one of the things that I remember about him. Also, he motivated my grandson to become a scientist, which he's now well on the way to becoming. And I remember this was a New Year's Eve party at your house, where I asked my grandson later that, you know, what do you want to do when you grow up? So he said, I want to be a scientist and I want to join Terry. So, so I cannot help feeling that, you know, that association with Pachi set his uh, sights towards scientific pursuits and he is now doing uh, a course in physics in Johns Hopkins and research on uh, white dwarf stars. So these are some of the vignettes that I can share. One of the persons who was always in his target sites was our uh, principal in Jamalpur, Mahadevan, whom we used to call Madi for short. And the way he could take off on Madi was really funny. And on one occasion, we punctured his car, which was his dearest possession. And uh, I, I don't want to tell you what transpired <laughs> after that, <laughs> but, but there were consequences. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thank you for this opportunity. It's been wonderful to be part of this celebration of a life truly well lived and of a person whom I grew to admire like no one else. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Vishnu, sir, would you like to say something? Uh, yes, um, thank you so much. I was very happy to work with a lot of people who have worked with a lot of people who have worked with a lot of people. I have worked with a lot of people. I miss a lot of things and Dr. Pachauri. There are two lines that are probably उनके उनको फिट बैठती हैं बट मैं कहना जरूर चाहूँगा उन कहते हैं कि होठों पे मुस्कान और हाथों में चिंगारी रखो होठों में मुस्कान और हाथों पे चिंगारी रखो जीना है अगर जिंदगी तो तरकी में बहुत सारी रखो तो तो थैंक यू हम बस मेरे पास सही वर्ड है उनके लिए तो थैंक यू सो मच Thank you. Thank you, Vishnu, sir. Uh, so as Dr. Ash mentioned, I would like to share my screen now um, and play the song. Victoria, I'm 
Again, the website is rkpachori.org. Um, so we we'll look forward to developing it together. And I just want to thank everybody once again. And Trisha, thank you for that song. And dad will, dad will live on forever. I know he's watching and he's very proud. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. 
Thank you so much. Vivaji, thank you. Very precious. Great.